Barry could feel the pus straining from his eye socket. It dripped agonizingly slow from the corner of his eyelid, down the side of his nose. It pooled by his upper lip. The smell of it was terrible. But the smell was always terrible. He would have wiped it away, but as always, his arms were strapped to the bed. He had been in this bed for almost three years. He had worn his threadbare pajamas for the same amount of time. The once blue stripes on the fabric had faded with the stains of bodily fluids. Barry had once been a very active man. He enjoyed mountain biking and running. His life had been full of busy days and nights. His endless supply of money from his parents allowed him to do anything he wished. Even marry a stripper he had fallen head over heels for. But now he was limited to the inches of bed he could move within. Even then, his muscles had atrophied so badly he couldn't even lift his neck. Bed sores covered his withering skin. Boredom was an everyday battle. He had counted every ceiling tile over a hundred times. He knew the patterns of the sun and moon. He slept as much as he could, but the pain kept him awake. Monica checked in on him as much as she could. She was a timid woman in her mid-forties. She had a hard time looking Barry in the eye. She cleaned his wounds with rubbing alcohol, murmuring apologies. She wasn't a nurse, but had become used to the blood. Barry would often plead with her to call the police. He would offer her money, more money than she ever dreamed. But she never took him up on his offer. Somewhere in the back of his mind, Barry understood she never would. He barely ever saw Jared, her husband, but sometimes he could hear him from the other room. She liked to sit on Jared's lap, giggling indecently. Monica never cried anymore, but Jared sometimes did. They were both present at the wedding all those years ago. Monica had worked for him for years. She was more like a friend than a house cleaner. Barry made sure to include her husband and their children. Monica really seemed to appreciate the invitation, even though she had warned him that there was something off about his new bride. But Monica hadn't visited today. Judging by the sun's position, Barry guessed it was around 11 a.m. He would have to wait for her to get up before anyone could come help him. The pus kept dripping and a bit fell onto his bottom lip. He wanted to vomit but had nothing in his body. Without warning, she appeared in his doorway. He would have recoiled if he could move. In the past few months, she had made herself into something terrifying. Her voice was unnaturally high. Her chest was completely flat. She often walked around the house in nothing but Disney-themed underwear. Today, she was wearing her hair in two braids on either side of her head. She wore a Mickey Mouse costume she must have bought from a Halloween shop. The outfit was much too small for her, but she had managed to crawl into it. Barry didn't speak, for fear he would be forced to taste the bile that was now covering his lips. Barry? She taunted in her horrible, high-pitched voice. Wanna play with me? Barry closed his eyes tightly. He tried to think about their wedding day. She looked so beautiful in her dress. He thought it was a little odd, because she wore an exact replica of Cinderella's dress from the movie. But he was so in love he would give her anything she wanted. They had hot dogs and cupcakes for their reception. 
the DJ played kids bop. The partygoers didn't say anything negative, they just gave strained smiles. Even his parents were nervous to criticise anything. Barry, are you ignoring me? Her voice was so loud, it hurt to listen. But Barry refused to open his eyes. He tried to think of the day they met, at the strip club. She was called Dolly. She really played up the little girl angle, which made her a lot of money. Men really liked her rosy cheeks, pigtails and giant breasts. But Barry saw beyond that. He saw her eyes, beautiful and innocent. He paid $900 for a private dance. They spent the entire time talking. She explained how her parents died in a freak accident, and since then she has had to strip to survive. She started dancing when she was 11. Barry told her about his loneliness and how he really wanted to settle down. She sat on his lap like a child. He can remember her words clearly. You're not like the others. Barry! He was torn from his memories by a sharp pain in his throat. He cried out, realizing she had cut him. The pus flew into his mouth and also sputtered onto his chest. She stood over him, holding a pair of safety scissors. Blood speckled her face. Playtime, little brother. She took the scissors and made crisscrosses into his neck. Tic-tac-toe. Barry tried to scream, but the blood was stuck in his throat, so it came out as more of a gurgle. His blood spilled onto his chest and made his skin a creamy red. She was laughing until a different look suddenly crossed her face, and she uttered a short, Shit. Barry felt himself losing consciousness. He thought he heard a yell for Mummy and Daddy, and Monica and Jared came running in. There was a flurry of movement. Then Barry passed out. He can't die! Barry came swimming back into consciousness. He heard Rebecca's voice talking sternly. There were people standing over him. He opened his good eye, but his vision was faded. Faces were drifting above him. Then he realized he wasn't strapped down. Relief flooded over him. He tried to lift his arm, and with great effort, he was able to touch his face. His eye wasn't hurting anymore. He could have laughed. The people around him noticed the movement. Should we strap him down? Rebecca did not sound concerned. No, he has barely any muscle tissue left. He wouldn't even make it to the door. The voice was a man's. He was calm, clinical. Barry blinked and tried to focus his vision. The scene became a bit clearer. He was in a dank room, on a hard metal bed. Rebecca and a stranger stood near him. He could vaguely make out Monica and Jared standing further away, huddled together. There was a lone light bulb hanging above them. It swung from left to right in an almost menacing fashion. Monica tried to chime in. Perhaps if we... Mummy, shut up! Rebecca didn't even look at her. Instead, her twisted face brightened into a large smile. You're lucky he isn't dead. He dies, so does your precious potato-faced offspring. She laughed cruelly. You have their children? asked the man. There was no shock, no concern. His voice was completely devoid of emotion. They're away at some factory in Russia. I sent them there to make clothing or something. I only have to say the word and they'll have a little accident. Rebecca did not remove her eyes from Barry. Barry tried to speak, but found himself unable. 
he then recognized there was a pain on his neck. His hand fell onto a large bandage covering his throat. Don't touch that, the man spoke. It took quite a bit of time to stitch you up. Rebecca grinned. Dr. Allship is the best doctor. He's the one who made me beautiful. I've decided to give you to him. She giggled. He works miracles, you know. Dr. Allship allowed himself to smile. You are too kind, Becky. He put a gloved hand over Barry's good eye. But we'll have you looking your best again. He turned to someone. 995, make sure 1477 is comfortable. Tomorrow we will be removing the one eye he has left. Barry panicked, tried to stand, he tried to move or do anything, but he only managed to fall off the table. Rebecca laughed at him. You are such an idiot, Barry. She bent over him, tauntingly. Barry then heard a large thud. He opened his good eye and saw Rebecca had fallen next to him, seemingly unconscious. He tried to look upward, but only saw the glint of the large object Dr. Elship was carrying. 995, he said stoically. We will also be needing a room for 1478. Dr. Elship turned backwards, towards Monica and Jared. Please! Jared's voice was shaking. We won't say anything. We have never said anything. The doctor did not register Jared's voice at all. As for you two, your services are no longer needed. Barry heard Monica scream. Two loud bangs rang in the air. Then there were two thuds of bones hitting an earthen floor. Dr. Alship bent down to Barry's eye level. Barry could see his face clearly. His eyes were a pale blue, nearly white. You must excuse me, number 1477. Please don't think I'm a bad man. I simply don't have time for four new patients. Sometimes you just have to let some clients go.